uh, online ranked head to head. It says custom playbooks have been re enabled in online head to head. So you can now use custom playbooks. I know there's a lot of people that were waiting for that. Custom playbooks is back in online head to head. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable muck coins, check out my sponsor at MOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. That's right, we just had a huge update. Three gigabytes updated to Madden 25, and they're really trying to improve a lot of things, especially when it comes to defense. So I'm going to go ahead and get into all that. But before I do, as always, if you guys want to see me do more videos like this, more update videos, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section as I try to do this for every update that comes out for Madden and college football. So stick around for that. And if you guys need more help or more money plays, you can download any of my ebooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top pin comment. Now let's go and let's get right into uh, some of the improvements they made. The first thing that I want to go over is gameplay. Obviously this affects every single game mode, uh, but for gameplay, a lot of stuff they're really trying to focus on defense. Coverage, first of all, if you guys try to play cup for quarters or cup for palms, you know that this defense is pretty bad. It doesn't really match really well. Uh, and that's something that they've been working on pretty much all year if you saw the last update for college they add a lot of matching principles when it comes to cover through they even added a lot of new matching defenses or altered the defenses that were already existing in the game to basically try to get them to match better and that sounds like what they're doing here with cover four quarters and palms i haven't had a chance to test it out yet but if this is true it sounds like it's going to be a more usable defense post patch as it's pretty easy to glitch out cover four uh now but now the first thing they mentioned here is it says they improved the box call logic to cover four and cover four palms to better defend passes out of bunch formations. Bunch has been the meta for probably more than a decade. So the fact that they're still trying to uh, to nerf this to the tones down with defenses is kind of telling. But it says in the dev note here, the box check is a zone check made by the defense in cover four match plays versus bunch and tight formations. It intends to have four defenders box in three receivers. It says it is a zone match concept. So coverage defenders will initially read the play while they drop into their zone coverages and then match up in a man coverage coverage on the receivers who enter their zone. So that's basically explaining what uh, what match principles do in the first place when it says uh, matching up with the man coverage. But if it's saying that they're gonna match up in man coverage, it means that you won't be able to basically uh, have a crossing route, uh, take somebody away. So it sounds like they're gonna be much more committed to their receivers, which is probably a good thing considering that it's, like I said, it's really easy to, to glitch out cover four. Now, a video that I put out on Friday, where I, or I think actually it was Monday, where I talked about how you can pump fake receivers and basically, uh, make them just like dumb out uh, that's something where uh, they basically fixed already that was something that i reported a couple days ago they already fixed that or at least it appears that they already fixed that it says fix an issue causing deep zone defenders to react inappropriately to pump fakes leaving receivers open deep this was something where i said if you basically just did like a, a, a delayed pump fake you could you could get receivers to to basically leave their assigned area and chase a ghost so that's something that they fixed which is probably a good thing i haven't had a chance to check it out though because like i said there are some things here which i question if they were really fixed there's another one here that says fix an issue causing the deep third hot route to default to the right third by default i don't know why they said default twice but regardless of the player's position on the field when using a deep third hot route on the left the hot route will now appropriately populate on the left another thing that i was going i was creating a gameplay for today this is college football but i was creating a gameplay where basically i was running a match in coverage and every single time my opponent would cross or would motion across a receiver the cornerback from the deep third on the left side would follow him all the way to the right side basically leaving a gaping wide hole on the left side deep if he would have hiked the ball i was i had to user this area to make sure that there was nothing that was getting open deep so something simple like that would be nice for them to patch in the next update but either way uh, we have another one here that says fix an issue causing some press animations to press the receiver too far up the field there's another one here that says tuning to improve outside deep zone defender positioning cushioning and leverage to corner routes which is something that obviously um you know if if, if the corner route or if the deep thirds outside do a better job of defending corner routes that would probably be a huge thing i know they typically react to corner routes you can create a lot of one play touchdowns using corner routes to pull the uh to pull those defenders down so hopefully they didn't overdo it because the last time they did a patch with the outside thirds and cover three now they bite on everything and you can basically get a post open over the top with really no effort at all now it also says fix an issue preventing the switch delay or stick delay setting from saving correctly after changed in gameplay settings menu so that was something that they put out now we also have passing and catching this one here is pre pretty key it says tuning to reduce the passing accuracy on high throw mechanic 
on competitive game style, which means a lot of people are high throwing too much, mossing everybody, rocket catching everybody, and they had to tone that down, which is probably good for the competitive community. It says, fix an issue causing the revamp pass meter to show red on a dead eye perfect throw, uh, which kind of sucks because red's like the only inaccurate way to the way you get an accurate throw in that particular system, which is supposed to make it easier for people to pass. The fact that there isn't uh, inaccurate throws as often in that system. But either way, next up, they also tuned to decrease the pass accuracy of mid tier quarterbacks based on the ratings. So they might have changed the threshold. It used to be 85. I don't know if they changed that or how they did that. But if you're using a bad quarterback, you might see it's more difficult to throw passes accurately, which is going to suck. Next up, we also have fixed an issue causing linebackers to appear to float in the air too long on jumping interceptions. This was something that was reported in my uh, my comment section the other day where apparently stuff like this was happening. And I was like, that to me has been an issue in the game forever with uh, you know guys jumping up uh, and unrealistic. I mean, typically it's not linebackers. Typically that's why people put safeties at the linebacker spots because they get those jumping animations. But apparently linebackers are flying around now, uh, which is something that they also appear to have patched. Uh, it also says fix an issue causing ball carriers to hold the ball in the wrong hand after making a lunge catch. That's pretty small. Uh, there's a lot of pre-snap alignment issues here that they also try to fix. It's fix an issue leaving the tight end uncovered when using cover a uh, cover three shell and a cover one coverage versus empty formations. This is something that I mentioned in a previous video as well, where I talked about the need for man alignment because a lot of times when you switch to a man coverage, they'll be and you can't tell because the player kind of glitches out, but there'll be somebody, typically the tight end, like they're saying, I never really noticed, but yeah, it's typically the tight end, where the tight end would just get uncovered a lot of times. You would try to switch over, and I, come to think of it, that's exactly the way that it happened, but that happened to me in a college football game, so that's something that uh, they're going to have to patch over there too. Hopefully all these patches get passed over to college whenever they put that patch out. They did say that was probably going to come next week, so like I said, I'll be reporting on that too. Make sure to be a subscriber. It says, fixed an issue leaving the tight end uncovered when using cover two shell and cover one coverage. That's probably one of the bigger issues that people aren't really talking about. The coverage shell system doesn't really work well. As you can see, we have back-to-back -back ones here. There's another one here too. It says, fix an issue leaving an inside receiver uncovered when using a cover zero shell on cover two man coverages. All three of these are about the coverage shell system not working properly, which is probably why a lot of people aren't using them. Uh, it says also, fixed an, an, fixed a resulting, this isn't even written right. It says, fixed and resulting in a single high safety alignment when using two high shells on uh, double uh, bracket coverages. I'm going to guess once again that when you're using double bracket, that typically means you have two man defenders. There's no safeties, but one of the man defenders is probably not manning somebody properly because all four of those are about man coverages not working properly, which is something like I said, I, I mentioned in my Friday video of everything that needs to be passed in these games. Now it also says fix an issue allowing the D lineman adjustment slant inside to put multiple rushers through the same gap. So basically that was the one I was looking for. That's the double mug, although there's a lot of other defenses where people try to do that. So I'm guessing that um, it, you might not be able to slant inside on a lot of your favorite defenses. So keep that in mind. It says global tuning to downline or DL shifts on double A gap al alignments to reduce unrealistic alignment leading to exploit blitzes. So that's the one they're talking about specifically about the double A gap, even though they didn't mention it. It also says tuning to pre-snap defensive line pinch assignment locations in nickel wide. That one I'm not necessarily uh, aware of. That's probably a smaller one as we're getting more towards the end of this list here. It says fix an issue causing the motion receiver to run to another player on a gun bunch wide nasty cheat spot and cheat inside zone i'm not familiar with those plays like i said they're a little bit more specific now they do have a lot of settings and ui changes it says fix an issue causing no clock runoff and head-to-head -head online ranked games with the accelerated clock option toggled on that's kind of an older issue i've noticed that in the past it usually corrects after a couple times but it usually gives you an issue like for the first few times that you do it and then eventually it'll it'll work uh, it says fix an issue where the controller would still vibrate after the vibration setup setting was turned off once again i mentioned all this stuff on, in my friday video how there seems to be an issue with the communication between the settings menu and what actually happens in game as whatever you set in your settings doesn't typically carry over which is like a really basic function that they're failing at here um, so I wouldn't be surprised if that really wasn't patched or not. It says fix an issue preventing the indicators from updating after subbing players into the game. Fix a rare issue causing the celebration wheel to get stuck on the screen. That's got to be weird. Fix an issue causing the pass block targeting lines to sometimes not appear once again, which I which I mentioned in my Friday video. 
It still happens in college, by the way. They got to patch all this in college as well. But it says sometimes not appear when entering the pass blocking adjustment. Yeah, like I said in my in my Friday video, a lot of times you're like guessing, like did I am I picking up this blitz? Because you can't, because the play arts glitch out in both the man coverage, which I was talking about in my Friday video, and in the uh, the pass blocking. Uh, adjustments. You don't see the play art all the time. A lot of times the play art is only like half showing up and you have to guess or just have like faith that everything's going to go the way, it's, <laughs> the way it's planned. It doesn't really work that way. Now it says playbooks, tuning to AI play call tendencies to make AI controlled teams more balanced between run and pass based on real life tendencies. Uh, that's not something, I don't really play the computer too much, but if you play the computer, that's something where they might try to be more 50-50. It says fix an issue preventing custom audibles from working correctly when resuming a saved game. I don't know if that's the custom audible glitch that I was talking about, where basically if you use custom playbooks, uh, it, it just and you add anything to a custom playbook, it'll a lot of times take away your audibles completely in game. This next one might be about that too. It says fix an issue that allowed the same play to be set for multiple custom audibles. I always thought that when you did that, it would just blank out one of the spots. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Sometimes you have two of the same audible. When you pull up your audible menu, you only have three options instead of four. So I don't know if they're talking about that. It says updated various typos and inconsistencies and in play names. All right, various, various, many. Uh, it says fixed an issue showing a defender with the wrong gap assignment on a 4-3 under Sam Crash 3. There's lots of play art issues too uh, when it comes to that stuff. Now, there's also a lot of general gameplay stuff. It says fixed a rare issue causing a blocker to sometimes work backwards on a play action pass. Some of these are just funny to read. Uh, it says fixed a rare issue causing players to awkwardly slide across the field when trying to get up after two consecutive physics-based physics -based, uh, hit stick tackles, which I still laugh at the fact that they think this is physics-based. Added logic to prevent defenders from instantly disengaging to the outside when given a slant outside defensive line adjustment meant to force them inside. So a lot of small stuff there. There was a lot of franchise mode uh, things that were corrected or attempted to be corrected as well. This is a very big list. This is a very big patch in general. It says fixed it or addressed an issue where non-commissioners could edit the height and weight of players. This has been going on since last year where you could do that stuff. Uh, it says fix an issue where the in-game ticker displayed incorrect game stats uh, which is something they also said, I think, in a previous patch that they, that, that uh, sometimes uh, the announcers will be talking about something that didn't even happen when it came to a score, stuff like that. It says, resolved an issue where league leaders and stats were not generated correctly on their respective list. This is something that I noticed a lot, too. If you're in a league, uh, and this has been going on since last year, uh, but basically if you're in a league where your guy has the most interceptions, usually he'll be at the top of the board, but if you're like fourth or fifth or sixth down the board, a lot of times it won't even show your player in the in the league stats. It'll only show it in the team stats, which is super weird. So I'm guessing that's what they're talking about. It says fix an issue where trading for a player and then editing them could update the player's portrait and model to the generated one. Not really too concerned about that, but resolved an issue where names of players created on a team builder team were announced incorrectly during in-game presentations. Uh, a lot of people like to play team builder. That might be important. Resolved a PC related issue where the leagues were not generating mock drafts during the season. There's a lot of PC issues here too. Fixed a PC issue where the scouting report grade uh, screen briefly appeared after making a pick during the draft. Resolved an issue where the change focus player filter went out of view on the weekly strategy training uh, training uh, screen. Resolved an issue where primetime game logos did not appear on the franchise hub after the first season. Resolved an issue where users were taken back on an on the wait, take it back to the onboarding select roster screen after backing out from the customized coach screen. I'm just going through this as quickly as possible, by the way, before creating a new league. Uh, it says address issues where the draft timer continued to operate even when set to off in league settings after pausing and resuming the draft. Resu resolved an issue where Team Builder uniforms failed to load after a disconnection and resuming the previous game. Team Builder has a lot of issues, by the way, if you can't tell. We have another one here where it says removed instances where wrong messages could fire in the message panel surrounding players winning uh, player of the week, uh, John Coachman, player sacks, and uh, player rushing attempts. I'm not even sure what they're talking about here. General stability improvements as well. Always a classic general stability improvements. Now, superstar mode says they fixed an issue where free agent contracts were not renewed correctly, fixed draft projection logic, fixed issues with animations, 
in the uh, featured deal stores and general stability improvements. Small for superstar mode. I don't know if they ever changed. A lot of people used to complain that it wouldn't save their favorite plays or something like that. I don't know if that was a superstar mode only issue, but that's something that a lot of people were talking about. Uh, online ranked head to head says custom playbooks have been re enabled in online head to head. So you can now use custom playbooks. I know there's a lot of people that were waiting for that. Custom playbooks is back in online head to head. And then we also have the ability to choose amongst different commentary teams is now supported, which is also really cool. So I guess somewhere in the game, you can choose what commentary team you want. I'm gonna guess that's gonna be something in the settings, but I really can't tell. Maybe some of you choose for the game. I really don't know. Uh, next up we have art. Now the Brown Stadium uh, rebranded to the Huntington Bank Field added additional NFL player likenesses to guys like Deron Bland, uh, Daniel Hunter, who's been in the game a long time. It's kind of strange he doesn't have a player like this. It says additional, so I don't know if they just altered it. But Kyron Williams, Rashid Shahid, uh, Brian Anger, Jesse Bates, AJ Cole, Miles Killebrew. Uh, and then you also have some new gloves and cleats, the Nike Vapor Jet, Jet 8.0, uh, the Nike Superbad 7, the Jordan Flylock 2.0. For people that are really into this stuff, added cleats, Adidas Impact 2, uh, Adidas Electric 1, Jordan Mid 11, Retro or Jordan Retro uh, Cement. A lot of really, um, you know, f good stuff for that if you're really into that stuff. I don't really care too much, but it also says visual uh, miscellaneous visual bugs were fixed. Uh, just as some captain patches on a few teams that didn't have them and fixed an issue causing all three flak jacket options to appear in the same player editor. Now, it also has a lot of commentary changes here as far as audio. It says, fixed various commentary bugs where speech can sometimes fire incorrectly for timeouts, incomplete passes, touchdown analysis. I mentioned this earlier in the video. Player names on important team builder rosters and post fumble in overtime. Uh, field goal, stuff like that. There's a lot of times where it's like the commentary wasn't matching what was going on, which is a major issue, especially if you're trying to get uh, some, you know, immersion from this game. It says updated commentary to reflect the following changes. Brown Stadium, which we just mentioned. Uh, and there was also rebranding to the Commander Stadium to the Northwest Stadium. And then it says all songs are now on by default in the EA Music playlist for new players. This includes stadium music, the Madden theme, and uh, the new Super Bowl theme song. So uh, lots of stuff there. Uh, let me know in the comment section. This is kind of a long video. I don't want it to go too long, so I'm going to try to wrap this up. But let me know in the comment section if there's still some, th some things that you uh, want to be passionate, how you guys feel about it. Other than that, I have some other Madden stuff popping up on my screen. So if you want to see that, just click the link. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. Much it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.